I start by attaching my template to a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF using spray adhesive. I chose MDF because it's cheap, easy to work with, and should give me a pretty good surface for the mold. I start by cutting out the outer shape on the bandsaw first before I move outside to dish out the center using an integral grinder. Using an angle grinder with a standard flap wheel, I start dishing out the center in a rough form. I could use any number of power carving wheels that I have, but they're a lot more aggressive and increase the likelihood that I might go too far and have to start from scratch. You'll notice that the inside surface right now is quite rough, but we will refine that here shortly. Using 40 grit paper on my random orbital sander, I start sanding the inside to get rid of the rough texture left by the flap wheel. From 40 grit, I move on up to 80 and 120, and then start using an interface pad, which is a foam pad you'll see here in a second. This interface pad you can get for a lot of different sanders, including standard 5 inch random orbit sanders, and it helps to conform to the inside curves of the model here. I sand through the grits up to 220 grit before applying a layer of wax. I'm using paste wax that I bought at Woodcraft, but you can also use Johnson's paste wax, which is available at most home centers. The trick is that you'll find it in the cleaning aisle with the floor waxing products rather than in the paint or finishing aisle. I apply a few layers of wax, let them soak in, and then buff them out using a shop towel. After that, I use 500 grit sandpaper on my sander with the interface pad to buff it out to a nice shine. Once the MDF model is complete, I start by making a mold form out of melamine shelving material. Here you'll see that I'm using silicone caulk to seal the corners to avoid any leaking from the mold rubber. If I had to do this again, I would use hot glue because I didn't let the silicone caulk cure long enough and it seemed to interact with the mold rubber in a strange way. It's also quite messy. Here I'm using some 3M double stick tape to attach the model to the bottom of the mold form. I'm also sealing around the model so that as little rubber as possible seeps under the model. Sticking the model to the bottom of the mold form is very important to make sure it doesn't float up. If you don't do this, it will definitely float. Before I pour the rubber, I'm applying a mold release to help make sure that the model doesn't get stuck in the mold after curing. I rotate the model around at this point to make sure that I cover as much as I possibly can with the mold release agent. After that, it's time to mix the rubber. I'm using a Shore 30 polyurethane rubber I got from a regional plastic supplier called Tap Plastics. They do sell online, but you can also probably find this at your regional or local plastic supplier. Another choice is to use silicone, but I found that polyurethane was cheaper in my case, and from what I've read, it should offer more longevity for multiple castings. This particular rubber is mixed in equal parts. To figure out how much I needed, I used a chart I found online coupled with measurements of the inside of the mold and a rough guess to figure it out. To prevent as much waste as possible, you could also use something like rice to actually fill the mold and measure how much volume specifically you might need to make sure you don't mix too much. I did end up with a little too much, but it wasn't a big deal and I was trying to get this done one evening. Here I started pouring the urethane rubber into the mold and making sure that the model is fully submersed. One thing I did off camera was to make sure that the mold was level and you'll see here that I'm actually adding in a shim that I predetermined I would need to level the mold. It's also pretty easy to look at the sidewalls and see if it's even across the edges of the sidewalls of the mold. You'll see here I probably had about 20% of the rubber left over but that wasn't a big deal. Here I'm using a small sawzall or a hacksaw by Milwaukee to vibrate the bubbles out. It actually worked out pretty well. I've also heard of people using sanders without sandpaper on them for a similar kind of effect. I let the mold cure for a day and then came back and started disassembling the mold form. Here I'm using some plastic pry bars and then a putty knife to get the mold apart. The silicone cured in a very strange way on the corners and also kind of seemed to mix with the rubber a little bit. 
It didn't affect the model or the mold at all, but the edges were a little bit messy and gooey. A little bit of the rubber did end up underneath the model, but not much, so I just cleaned that up with a razor and a pair of scissors. Next, I mixed equal parts Portland cement and play sand in a tub. Again, I was just guessing on the volume, but it seemed to work out fairly well with just a little bit of overage. Here I'm using Quickrete black cement dye, and per the instructions, I'm mixing it into the water. I just guessed on the amount because it's meant to go for a whole bag of concrete and I'm just mixing some. From here I poured the blackened water into the play sand and cement mix until it got to the right consistency which is about that of peanut butter or slightly uh, slimy peanut butter I guess you'd say. I'm making sure the mold is level before I pour the cement to make sure that it doesn't come out uneven. Give it another final mix here real quick, make sure everything is well mixed, and then I start pouring it in the mold. Now, it would have been better if I did apply the mold release agent before I did this, but I happened to forget because I just was excited to get the cement into the mold. Kind of smoothing the mold over with my paint stir stick here, making sure that it's filled to the top. Here I'm using the Hacksaw again to vibrate to make sure I get any air bubbles out and again it worked pretty well. I also tapped the side of the mold with a garden trowel to help get any big air bubbles out. After that I let the cement cure for two days as recommended on the bag. In hindsight I probably would have let it cure one day so it would be a little soft and easier to sand after the fact. I was a little apprehensive at this point because I did forget the mold release agent, but lucky for me, it all came out without a hitch. I tell you what, once it came out and I saw how it looked, I was super stoked. Here I started sanding it to smooth out some of the corners, and then I started sanding the rough texture that was left on the back from the casting. That was the one part that wasn't actually inside the mold. After that little bit of sanding, I needed to seal the concrete. I wasn't sure what to use, so I ended up using my spoon butter, which is made of organic roasted walnut oil and organic cosmetic grade beeswax. Came out pretty great. Overall, I'm happy, but I was hoping it would have been a little bit darker in the end. For information about the products I use, check the description below or check out the link to my website. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you want to see more day-to-day behind-the-scenes projects. Have a good one!